we need to find the smallest positive integer n, for which this sum of 2003 consecutive squares is divisible by 2003. This seemingly complex problem has a surprisingly elegant solution. What value of n might work here? Our first instinct might be to try specific values or look for a pattern related to 2003 itself. But let's approach this more systematically. With p equal to 2003, we can express our sum in compact sigma notation. We're summing from k equals 0 to p minus 1, giving us exactly p terms. Our first task is to simplify this enormous sum. We'll expand the squared binomial and leverage standard summation formulas to make this tractable. We begin by expanding the square using the binomial formula. Each term becomes a sum of three parts. By the linearity of summation, we can distribute the sigma and handle each term separately. For the first sum, we're adding the constant n squared p times, which simply gives us p times n squared. For the second sum, we can factor out the constant term 2n, leaving us with a sum of consecutive integers. The sum of integers from 0 to p1 is given by the formula p times p1 divided by 2. This is a fundamental result in discrete mathematics. Simplifying, the 2 in the numerator cancels with the 2 in the denominator, giving us n times p times p1. For the third sum, we use the formula for the sum of squares from 0 to p1, which is p times p1 times 2p1, all divided by 6. This is another key result in discrete mathematics. Combining all three parts, we have a clean, simplified expression for our sum s. Notice how we've transformed an enormous sum into a compact algebraic expression. Now we can analyze when this sum is divisible by p. We need to determine the conditions under which p divides the entire expression. This is our divisibility condition. We need to determine when p divides this entire expression. Let's analyze it term by term. Since the first two terms are divisible by p, our condition reduces to analyzing just the third term. Our entire complex problem has been reduced to determining if p divides this fraction. We can factor out p from the numerator immediately. Now we arrive at the critical point in our analysis. We need to determine when the remaining fraction is an integer. After factoring out p, our condition becomes, when is this fraction an integer? If we can prove it's always an integer, then p divides our sum for any value of n. Since 2003 is a prime greater than 3, we'll prove our result for any prime p greater than 3. First, we check divisibility by 2. Any prime greater than 2 is odd, so p minus 1 is always even. This means the numerator has a factor of 2. Next, we check divisibility by 3. Since p is a prime other than 3, it cannot be divisible by 3. So p has remainder either 1 or 2 when divided by 3. In the first case, if p leaves remainder 1 when divided by 3, then p minus 1 is divisible by 3. So our numerator has a factor of 3. In the second case, if p leaves remainder 2 when divided by 3, then we need to check 2p minus 1. Substituting p equals 2 in this expression, modulo 3. We get 4 minus 1, which equals 3, which is congruent to 0 modulo 3. So in this case, 2p minus 1 is divisible by 3. In both cases, the numerator is divisible by both 2 and 3, which means it's divisible by their least common multiple, 6. This is true for any prime p greater than 3. This remarkable result means our condition is satisfied for every integer n. The sum s is divisible by p, which is 2003, for every possible value of n. Let's now answer our original question with this powerful insight. We've proven that 2003 divides our sum for every positive integer n. This is an unexpected and beautiful result. Since all positive integers work, the smallest one is simply 1. What appeared to be a complex problem requiring extensive calculation has revealed a profound mathematical truth. 
This divisibility property holds universally for any prime p greater than 3. Let's verify our theoretical result with a concrete example. We'll check whether the sum for n equals 1 is actually divisible by 2003. For n equals 1, we're summing the squares from 1 to 2003. Let's apply our formula directly. Substituting p equals 2003 and n equals 1 into our derived formula. We get this expression. Observe that 2003 is a common factor in every term. We can factor out 2003, and the remaining expression is clearly an integer. This confirms our theoretical result. The sum is divisible by 2003 regardless of the value of n. Thank you for joining us on this mathematical journey. What seemed like a complex problem requiring extensive calculation revealed a beautiful, universal property. If you enjoyed this elegant proof, please like and subscribe for more mathematical insights.